Welcome again, everybody. It's been a while. I think this is a good case to uh, start uh, the uh, wheel moving again. Uh, this case is uh, actually dedicated for junior radiology residents, but I'll explain it in a way that uh, could be useful for interns and students as well. So the first part of the case would be extremely basic to get oriented, and I'll uh, actually uh, clarify when the case becomes uh, of more importance to uh, more junior radiology residents. For students, you're looking at an axial CT scan of the brain. This is anterior, this is posterior, and this is right and that's left. Again, for students to be oriented, what's black here, this is uh, CSF within the ventricular system. You also see black lines that extend irregularly into the brain. These are CSF-containing sulci. From basic anatomy, we know that we have two types of tissue, the gray matter and the white matter. On a normal CT scan, the gray matter looks a bit whitish, while the white matter looks darker. So the cortex, which is gray matter, looks a little bit as a white outline. Look at this area here as an example. The white matter, like what you see here, appears darker in comparison. That's normal. Without going into much details, uh, because this has been described in a previous clip, these uh, whitish areas that you see embedded within the white matter, so these here, this is the basal ganglia and the uh, thalami, and they're actually part of the deep, deeply located uh, gray matter, and that's why they look as bright as what we described with the cortex. Of course, what's white here is bone, so this is the skull containing all the brain structures that we talked about. Now that students and interns are oriented, let's go to the part that's most interesting to residents, in particular junior residents doing on calls. This is an elderly patient, uh, he's about 70. And as you know, as uh, you see older brains, you're gonna have more CSF spaces. The uh, volume of the brain decreases and you'll have uh, a more pronounced appearance of the ventricles and a more pronounced appearance of the sulci. Now, what I need you to do is to compare the uh, both sides for symmetry. This is the midline here, and try to do that. I'll tell you that the right side is normal, the left side is abnormal. One of the most common indications to perform a CT scan of the head is to exclude uh, stroke. Strokes could be ischemic or hemorrhagic, with ischemic strokes being the ones that might be difficult at an early stage. It's not uncommon to see a normal or near normal CT scan of the brain within the first six hours after having a clinically confirmed stroke. The first thing to emphasize is that stroke is a clinical diagnosis. So if you have a normal CT scan within the first six hours from presentation, that does not exclude the diagnosis. The other thing to emphasize for a resident who deals with such cases is to compare symmetry of the brain. Now, looking for symmetry means that you have to look for the symmetry of densities, so structures have to be the same color, and for symmetry of shape. Now, looking at this case again, if you look at the right side of the brain, mainly the right temporal lobe, you notice that the sulci are more obvious, more pronounced, where they are less pronounced on the left. This is what's called effacement of sulci. Such sulcal effacement, where the sulci are compressed against each other, is a sign of early mass effect, and this could be a sign of early edema in the context of uh, ischemic stroke. Now to the next teaching point. You probably noticed that there is a relatively clear well demarcation between what's normal gray matter and what's normal white matter. This is what we call a good gray-white matter differentiation. If you have edema, you lose that. So there is L definition of the gray-white matter demarcation.
Now, if you look at the usual window of a CT brain, you might see that, but it's way easier if you change that window to a very dark one, where you could exaggerate the difference between white and gray. Looking here, you could tell that there's something that looks different in color than the other side. And let's go a little bit lower here, you see that even more clearly. Now, to emphasize the previous point, and to see this hypodense area in a better fashion, let's change the window to a darker window. Although it does not look like a clean window, it looks very noisy, but you could easily tell the very obvious hypodensity in the left temporal lobe compared to the more well-differentiated gray and white matter on the right side. Now to one more final sign on this case. If you look at this linear structure here, it has a soft tissue density that's very similar to adjacent brain tissue, right? So this here is a vessel, and uh, without going into much details, this is the right middle cerebral artery, okay? Now compare this right middle cerebral artery, the MCA, with the MCA on the other side. Tell me if you see a difference. I think it's uh, clear now that this left-sided MCA is way brighter than the normal right-sided MCA. Now, one of the reasons you might have a very bright vessel could be calcific atherosclerosis because calcium would have the same bright density as bone. However, another reason for this to happen, and the uh, appearance is different actually, is to see an acute thrombus within the lumen of the vessel. So acute thrombosis of an artery would appear initially bright on a CT scan even without calcium and even without giving intravenous contrast. So what you're seeing here is called a hyperdense MCA sign, which is actually a sign of early ischemic infarction. To summarize, there is an abnormal left side, mainly a temporal lobe, that shows sulcal effacement, relative hypodensity with L definition of the gray-white matter differentiation, and a hyperdense left MCA sign, these are all consistent with an acute stroke on the left side. Now I'll give you more clinical information. The patient presented with right-sided weakness. So given the uh, clinical information and the imaging findings, you know you're dealing with an acute ischemic uh, left MCA infarction. Now let's see what happened to the patient on a subsequent CT scan two days after. Here's the CT scan two days after, showing that the infarct uh, progressed as expected. The edema is more obvious and pronounced. It's more dark than what we saw on the initial scan. You have much more mass effect to the extent that the ventricles that we talked about are compressed on the left side, which actually leads to a significant degree of midline shift. The midline structures are shifted to the other side. So this is uh, consistent with what we expected, uh, and unfortunately the patient uh, uh, progressed to a larger infarction. To summarize what we talked about, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, very basic anatomy for students, but for junior residents, uh, you could miss a stroke within the first six hours on a CT scan. You have to always look for early findings, such as uh, very subtle hypodensities, sulcal effacement, loss of the gray white matter differentiation, and a hyperdense MCA sign. There are a few other signs that we could talk about in later clips, but if you keep this in mind, and if you remember one thing, compare symmetry, that would be very sufficient for today's case. Thank you for watching, and see you with more cases later.